あれそのパンなくてもなあだからひなりはちゃっとなんだちゃんとおきいなるべくなさにいつ I finally got a day where I had no plans so it's a day of fish walking the dog in the countryside and just yeah it's getting all these tanks back up to scratch getting some content getting some photos done up it's been so long since I've been able to sort of actually focus and sit down in front of the tanks and take some really good shots so first job is going to be some cleaning break for a bit to take the dog out and then I'll come back and do some photography um gonna just film bits of the day and put up a sort of a, a sort of um highlights reel I guess of what I've been doing today and just a bit of chat so yeah I hope you enjoy it and we'll get started from here First job of today is cleaning the clown killifish nymphaea lotus tank that you see here and was behind me earlier. Um, this tank is growing so much nicer again. You can see that the lilies are starting to fill out at a low level. I've still only got one leaf shooted up to the surface. Uh, I'm waiting for some more before I can remove the water lettuce because it's not really the part of the idea. It was meant to be one species of the plant, one species of fish, and I've already broken that rule. And there's also shrimp in there to try and fight the algae off, but they'll all be removed for the final photos and videos and stuff. Hopefully, when the lilies start to really show off and look their best. But yeah, the fish are doing really well, and I really like sort of how they are filling the whole space of the tank. Some of them are at the top, some of them are below, and they're just, yeah, looking really good. One of the smaller individuals, which I thought was a female, is just starting to develop some colour on the on the tail fin as well. So clearly it is a male. Um, so I think that gives me five and five. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't done a head count recently. So yeah, let's get cleaning. The flow of the filter has actually pushed away a bit of the sand. And you see this little divot that's created. And as such, you can start to see the mesh bags that had the plant soil in. So I'm going to have to re cover that and make sure that's not visible because it just looks a bit unnatural and weird so yeah I'm gonna part of the maintenance make sure I push that sand back so I'll first quick wipe off the glass make sure any of the algae is suspended in the water so I can siphon it out when I do the water change um, so start the siphon up I submerge the hose fill it up so I don't have to mouth siphon uh, it's the only time I will do that in this video every other time I will mouth siphon and then I'm just gonna give the filter a quick once over, make sure I remove any of the solid waste that I've built up and fill it back up and get the filter back running so I can kick out any of the detritus that I've stirred up from the filter and then when I siphon it I can do and remove that. Uh, add some fruit tabs, that's what my wet blank there, root tabs and then top up the tank with some water. Um, yeah I just thought I'd do a quick sort of voiceover for for what I was doing because it wasn't always that clear when my back was turned to the camera. So this has left me with quite an uneven uh, botanical bed. All of it, where, where I poured the water in, the natural flow of the, the tank has pushed all of the leaves to the bottom, bottom front left corner. Uh, that needs to be even up, but I'm going to go and prepare some more botanicals today and I'll even up by adding some more to the right hand side and to the back. Um, naturally, because the sand slopes to the front, they all come to the front anyway, which is a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, I'm going to add some more because this is nowhere near enough for the final aim. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to even up the sand in that back corner, turn the filters back on, let the water clear up a bit, prep some botanicals later for some tanks, including this one, and add those in a bit to finish off the maintenance. And I just need to wipe the front off as well because there's a few water droplets, and when I come to photograph, they'll have dried and be annoying. So yeah. First thing to do, just push some of this sand back. Even all of that up. And then get rid of my indentations. Make sure it's all nice and even. Don't want obvious grooves in there. There we go. And then with my dry hand, I'll plug in the filter. So 
Yeah, I've just popped some acrylic covers just to make the make it less likely that the fish are going to jump out. Uh, I'm going to let let it clear, and we're going to go downstairs to the fish room and start working on the knife fish. Room. So now we're down here in the fish room. Uh, this is my knife fish tank, which you would have seen in the full fish room tour. I just top, popped the lights on here because currently I, I, they don't actually come on until sort of one to o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm filming in the morning, so I popped the lights on which means the knife fish are actually a bit more active. You'll see a few of them be swimming around behind me. This is going to be a big clean. So I've got the filter to do. I've got to try and get rid of as much of this floating plant and the sort of algae that's everywhere. Like, I think I mentioned it in the fish room tour that I've had a bit of a cyanobacteria um, outbreak in multiple tanks. And I finally got a sort of hand of it on the hold of it, hold of it on some of the other tanks. This one here, I haven't managed to tackle it yet. It's a bit of a bigger job. So that's today's job. Big deep clean, clean the filter, give everything a scrub, um, and make the tank looking nice. The reason I've been putting this off was because I've been trying to breed them. So I've got seven sort of frying, sort of growing up now, and they're triggered to spawn in the dry, warm months. So I've not been doing as many big water changes as I would do during the cold, wet months. So I'm trying to simulate that sort of natural environment. And so I've been kind of putting off trying to get them to spawn, but it's time now to, I've got some fry growing up. Uh, I'm happy with that. Time to get them one big water change, and then I'll leave them for a few weeks probably before the next one, just so that I'm not doing too much and not not sort of going away from their natural natural um, environments too much. They'll occasionally have that, that big downpour in the, in the dry warm season, I'm sure. So one big change and then leave them alone again. So that's the plan. Let's get started, I guess. Second, a lot of floating plants have been removed and I've scrubbed the wood, the rocks, uh, rubbed my hands over the leaves of the plants that I had any of the algae on and just sort of done that. Heater and filter have turned off, it's now time to clean the filter because now I've disturbed all of this up, I'm going to disturb the filter as well, get that back on, kick out any of the crap that's going to come out of it and then I can siphon up, remove a big chunk of the water, get as much of that those algae or bacterial cells out of the water. But I'm going to need this bucket and currently it's full of disgusting um, covered floating plants. So these are going to go to the compost, always dispose of the packet plants carefully, uh, make sure they don't get released into the wild because they can become invasive and if they do that they will be banned very quickly in the hobby. So dispose of them properly in the waste and yeah so I'm going to go and take this out to the compost. So I'm going to pop the light on and move the camera so you can see what I'm doing on the floor. That's for the filter maintenance and I'll go back up do a time lapse of fully draining the tank. Um, I do have Pop the light on. I do have a very large hose. Uh, this will reach the floor drain outside so I can send the water straight to waste. It makes maintenance so much quicker. But in the summer, I need all this water to water the plants at the moment. So it's going to be buckets and a short siphon for me. Um, so the extra draining time lapse is going to take a little while because I'll be running in back and forth, taking the water outside to fill up water butts and watering cans and all of that. Uh, for the fill up, I will fill up quickly using a hose, so that will be a bit more how I would normally do it. So yeah, just to explain, I do have a longer hose to make maintenance quicker and easier, which is essential when you're maintaining so many tanks, you've got to try and look for the quickest way to do it, but I'm also conscious about saving water, and fish water is so good for plants, it's so worth getting it out in the garden.
So I've drained out as much water as I want to take out, probably about 50%. I'm now gonna replant these plants and then I'll top it up with some water. So that's all now planted. I just sort of put some behind the wood uh, and on the back and made this sort of right hand cluster even more dense. Uh, yeah, so now I'm going to fill it up and hope they don't all come loose and the knife fish don't uproot them, which they probably will. Uh, I also added a few of the water letters I took out of the clown kittyfish tank because they weren't covered in algae and it will just help sort of shade areas as well. So first thing to do, I'm going to fill it straight from the tap, so I'm going to add some dechlorinators to the tank. It's about 200 litre tank, so I will dose 5 mil, which is the required amount for 200 litres, which is a cap full. And then I've got my hose pipe. Um, it's already been used this morning, but if I hadn't used it, I'd want to flush it through for probably a minute just to make sure there's nothing um, built up in the actual pipe. It's quite a long bit of pipe. I've got it so I can reach all the tanks in here, but also the tank in the lounge. Uh, just helps keep it quick and pain free. So yeah, I will, that's all on. I will time flap this and slowly fill up the tank. So it looks like the time lapse didn't work. I pressed the button, but it didn't actually um, start recording. So basically I filled up the tank with some tap water. Um, I haven't filled it all the way. Like I said, they don't generally get such huge um, water chemistry shifts and yeah, basically the amount of water, fresh water coming into their, their environment in the wild when the weather is so warm. So because of that, I'm not gonna do the full 50% water change today. I took 50% out, I've probably added about 25, 30% back in, enough for the heater to be submerged. I'm gonna put it all back on and leave it for a couple days with the light off to help the, the cyanobacteria not proliferate back. And then I will do another sort of quick siphon off any growth of algae um, and then top it up the rest of the way. So that's the plan. Let's see if it works and hopefully I'll go back to having a, a better look, looking tank because although it's actually fine for the fish they don't care they're still very seem happy and healthy as much as far as I can tell. Uh, obviously it doesn't look so good for visitors and it's just bad practice to have one species of algae sort of dominating your, your aquarium. So yeah, that's filter, heater, all back on. Turn the light off, but I can't right now because it's Bluetooth controlled from my phone and I'm recording on my phone, so that will have to wait. While I'm in the fish room, I'm gonna gather up some botanicals, pop them on while I make my lunch and my coffee, and then we'll get started with the afternoon session, I guess. Um, yeah. So I gathered up some botanicals. In here I've got mostly a uh, assortment of leaves, oak, beech, magnolia at the bottom, magnolia leaf that I collected, uh, large oak, a few twigs in here as well, um, a copper beech, uh, a magnolia seed pod down there. Uh, yeah, just a, a mix of botanicals that I'm gonna boil up. These to be spread across, a few for the knife fish tank, uh, a few for the nymphaea, and clown kiddifish tank, and maybe a few for the main sort of sump system as well. So I'm gonna rinse these off. I won't do the full process, but I'll talk you through it. I'll rinse these off under the tap, fill it up, boil them for probably five to 10 minutes, and then pour that water away, re-soak them in fresh water for a few hours before then using the leaves. Uh, just make sure that no contaminants uh, or anything nasty could get into my tanks. So I'm gonna do that, have some lunch, and I'll come back to fish stuff. Ready for a walk? Should we go? Yeah, come on. Wrong way, come on, this way. Good boy. Can you imagine having a tank big enough to have that tangle of wood sort of dropping down? Providing shelter, 
just to see that being sort of a riverbank in the Amazon. We're back from our walk. We have a lovely time, but let's go back to fish. So my plan is to do a big water change on this tank now. Obviously you've seen this tank a fair bit lately and you've seen me do a water change on it. So I'm not going to go and film any of that. The only thing I'm going to mention now is that I'm going to try and push some of the floating plant, there's quite a lot at the front, push some of it back to make a sort of arena in the front. I'm hoping to get some nice photos of the half beaks and with all the floating plants at the front, it's making it impossible to, to capture them. So I'm going to make a little sort of display arena for them, for them at the surface of, of an open space to hopefully get them to swim in for later. So water change, rearrange the floating plants, and then I'll probably film a bit more about the camera setup and some, show off some of the photos I take later on. I think that's everything I really had to do today. Um, this is then going to be an afternoon sort of more about content, um, taking pictures of the tanks that I've just cleaned and stuff. One other thing that I should mention is I just actually went up and checked on the killifish tank and I saw them spawning in amongst the leaflet. So where it all compiled up into the front, right, front left corner, um, there was a male and female under there um, embracing basically. So I can't, I can't see any eggs, so I can't collect any. They're up and they'll, I'm sure they'll get eaten. But they, they were definitely in there um, spawning in the leaf litter. So definitely want to get some more leaf litter in there. Try more hiding spaces and see if I can get some fry because that's great news. Yeah. So the water change is done on this tank. I've given the front pane of glass a bit of a, an algae clean and I'm ready to get photographing, I guess. Um, Got newly charged up batteries to go in my flash gun. So I use a newer speed light flash gun and a newer trigger. Uh, they're really great for being able to shoot at low light intensities and shoot really fast moving fish because you can use a shutter speed which is far higher than you would with ambient lighting. Um, for those of you that have tried taking photos of fish before, if you're just using a smartphone camera, you're probably not going to get those crisp images because you can't adjust the shutter speed so well and it won't f trigger a flash from above the tank. If you try and use your normal flash that's built in, you'll get a lot of glare on that front panel. So this is what I'm going to use and I'm going to need to mount it on the tripod that I'm currently mounting my phone on. So from, I'm going to, yeah, basically have to, to go now. Uh, to go? I guess I'm not really going anywhere because I'm filming. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically it for the video now I guess. Um, I'm going to take some, sh take some photos, look at them and then hopefully I'll add in sort of a montage I guess of, of the images that I've just taken. So my first plans are half beaks and chili borers in here, maybe some samurai grammys but I've done a lot, a lot of those lately and head on upstairs and take some new shots of the clown killifish and see if I can capture them spawning if they're still doing it, we'll see. Um, so yeah, that's the plan, so see what time it is by then and maybe pop out and take some photos of the, the textures on my fish or, or something else that's out in the fish room. Uh, licorice grind, I need to do an update on the linky eye, parasimonis, the parasimonis linky eye. Uh, so maybe I'll take some photos of them as well. So yeah, um, enjoy the video. Hope you enjoyed the video, not enjoy the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna take some photos. Don't. Right, if you want to see some images, carry on watching. If not, just, yeah, let me know if you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and all of those sorts of things that you have to say really helps. And hopefully lots more regular content coming soon. So I haven't had a chance to have a look at all the images I've taken, and I haven't edited any of them because I wanted to get this video out for everyone to, to look at over the weekend. Um, but. Here's just a few that I've managed to just send over to my phone and, and add into the end of this this video. I hope you really like them. I think some of them have potential and I reckon there's some absolute gems in there that I haven't found yet. This one is one of my favourites. I love the, the blue face that you can see on this killifish. <laughs>